Hello, welcome to another tutorial of System for Dialog in 5 minutes. Today we'll talk about cover point bins. This is a 3 bit variable, it is randomized to 8 times. This is a cover group and a cover point. After you run a simulation, you can generate a coverage report. And this is how the report may look like. The 3 bit variable has 80 values, and automatically the report has 80 bins. Every bin represents one value. Here you can see that value 0 and 7 was never exercised in the 8 tries, and the coverage is 6 out of 8 or 75%. This report is useful but it is a bit primitive. Sometimes we only use certain values, we don't need to know if all the values are used, and sometimes some values are not acceptable. In those cases, you can define specific bins to meet those functional requirements. Bins are defined inside a pair of curly braces. Here we defined 3 bins. These are the bins name and these are the values they cover. Basically, this covers the lower two values, this covers the middle form, and this covers the upper two. And now the report will look like this. The auto-generated bins are replaced by the user-defined bins. One bin is considered covered if any of its value is used. If you have a continuous range, you can use the square bracket notation. The result would be the same. If you want the bin to show all the values separately, you can use the square bracket like this. The report will split the bins accordingly. The value 2, 3, 4, 5 will have its own bin. Note that if you do so, the number of expected values would change. Similarly, if you want to split a bin into a number of groups, you can put a number inside the square bracket. Here the number of bins are 2, so the values 2 and 3 are grouped into one bin, and the values 4 and 5 into another. In general, for user-defined bins, you can omit the values you don't need, and the report may look like this. This is not a good practice. It would be best to create a bin to represent the values which are not specified by using the keyword default. The report will show a dedicated table for those values, and you can check if those values are exercised. But bear in mind that the default bins will not contribute to the coverage percentage. Now, if you are sure certain values can definitely be omitted, you should use the ignore bits instead. Generally, the report is pretty similar. However, the report I have shows the count to be zero even though I know it's been exercised. I cannot find any direct reference of this report behavior in the specification. If you know certain values can never be exercised, you can use illegal bits like this. If an illegal value is exercised, the simulation will fail and stop. Having said that, even though a simulation stops halfway, it could still hit 100% coverage by then. Apart from discrete values, you can also specify transition coverage. This means the sampled value is 0 and then 1. This means 2 and then 3 or 4. And this means 5 and then 6 and then 7. And the report may look something like this. You can also specify wildcard coverage. This is an example of coverage which samples only odd values, and this is the report it generates. You can see its bin only has the odd numbers. In the previous tutorial, we've talked about cross coverage. These are two cover points CPA and CPB. They cover 3 bit variable A and B respectively. And they define two bits, 0 to 3 and 4 to 7. And this is a cross coverage of the variable A and B. Because A and B each has 8 values, Altogether, it has 64 combination. The cross coverage report may look like this. Actually, you can choose to use the cover point label instead of the variables. In that case, the cross coverage will use the bins from the cover point. Instead of 64 combinations, now there are only 4 combinations. 2 CPA bins crosses with 2 CPB bins. Likewise, you can also create user-defined bins for cross-coverage. Since it involves multiple values, you need to use array notation. This is to cover the case when a is 0 and b is 0. This is to cover the case when a is 6 or 7 and b is 6 or 7. This is another way of specifying the same bins. This way is more descriptive compared to listing down all values like this. In cover point, user-defined bins will replace the auto-generated bins, but in cross-coverage, user-defined bins will coexist with auto-generated bins. Alright, today we've learned about creating user-defined bins. There are many ways to achieve that. I would advise to keep the bins as simple as possible. In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about interface.